Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback Classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Sentinel. This was a 1990 release from Atari developed by David Lubar of Imagineering. It was the only light gun game released for the Atari 2600 and was also ported to Atari 7800 in 1991. The game has not been especially well loved over the years, with various critics describing it as uninspired, boring, redundant and a complete dud, with unfavourable comparisons often being made to Exidy's arcade game Crossbow. Interestingly, Imagineering were actually responsible for the Commodore 64 port of Crossbow. So let's go play this complete dud then, and without a light gun too. Let's go play Sentinel. Okay, welcome back once again to Atari Flashback Classics, where today we're looking at Sentinel, a game which, if the reviews are to be believed, is going to be a load of old toss. Um, but, you know, part of the point behind this series has been spending some time with each and every game and seeing if some of them might surprise you a little bit. So, um, I don't remember trying this at all before, uh, so I have no sort of real expectations for this besides what I've read about it. Um, but also one thing I've discovered over the years is that Quite often, uh, my opinions don't line up with those of video game reviewers. I'm not going to say that's the case here, but I'm certainly interested to find out. Let's have a read of the manual. Locate and absorb energy. You're a scientist and your invention, a pulsating glowing orb called the Sentinel, absorbs and stores energy from a variety of sources. Now Earth is threatened by deadly aliens and you must use your creation to save your planet, obviously. You must defend the Sentinel against alien attacks as it glides over four enemy planets, absorbing all alien energy sources in its path. The Sentinel absorbs the energy from every power pod or energy capsule you shoot with your light gun. When an energy source is hit, the Sentinel absorbs the target's energy. Each of the four alien planets is more difficult to conquer than the last. You must find and destroy the alien lords who guard each planet's power station. Destroy the station to destroy the planet and then move on to the next world. Uh, okay, so there, there is an end to this game. Um, it's from the later era of the 2600, as you can tell by the style of the manual and the packaging. Um, and this was a point where a lot of developers realised that people actually wanted to beat games sometimes, rather than just have these perpetual, um, perpetual never-ending arcade-style games. But we shall see. Okay, Sentinel is a fast-action arcade-style game requiring lightning-fast reflexes and skillful shooting through four deadly alien landscapes. You begin the game with four lives, damage from enemy fire bleeds energy from the Sentinel, and too many hits from enemy fire destroys the Sentinel. You must destroy enemies on the ground before they have a chance to fire and blast enemy ships out of the sky <coughs> Excuse me. before they can touch the Sentinel. Some aliens do more damage than others. Yes, 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 yes. You find the following items to help you in battle. Energy pod circles the sentinel. Uh, activate super shots by shooting one shot at the sentinel orb itself. Okay, sounds pretty straightforward. I'm just going to quickly check the options for this. Uh, control sensitivity absolute. Um, so I guess this is probably going to be a really twitchy analog control in this one, I'm guessing. But let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Yes, it is. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the best way to play, but we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. All right, game reset. Off we go. Alp Taurus. Lost the Sentinel. Oh, I'm concentrating. <laughs> this isn't terrible so far.
I mean, no, there's not a lot to it, but... So shooting is actually consuming the sentinel's energy, so by blasting too much I'm actually putting myself at a potential disadvantage. Because you get some energy back for everything you blow up. So it pays to take a bit of time to be more accurate if you can. And at the very least, to try and stop stuff slamming into the Sentinel. Oh, it's all over. Alright, okay, I get what's going on now. Let's give that another go. Those things give you a lot more energy. So they're really useful to be able to hit. 50 is the maximum energy from the liquor thing, so if you want to try and maintain that for as much as possible. Right, and that's the smart shot. You have to wait for that to charge up again before you can use it again. That's the S gauge down at the bottom. When that gets to 99, you can fire for another smart shot. This is one of those games where sort of being able to handle the analog stick well is going to stand you in good stead. So it's never going to be quite as accurate as, or as intuitive as, as using a light gun, but... Once you get a feel for how it works, you can actually be pretty accurate. Does put a bit of a strain on the old hands after a while, eh? I think you can actually shoot bullets out of the sky, that's quite interesting. Tell you what would have been nice in this collection would be gyro controls. As gyro controls do actually work really nicely as a sort of substitute for light guns. They're not perfect. But for a lot of people they would be more intuitive than these very twitchy analog controls that we've got here. counter down at the bottom is showing our distance to the target of the stage. We're actually getting pretty close now. So very soon we should be coming into contact with the- oh it's the alien master! I panicked. I panicked. But that's a boss in the Atari 2600 game. What on earth is going on here? You know what? I'm beginning to think people might have judged this game a little bit hastily. I mean, yes, it is exceedingly simple, as light gun games tend to be. But 
but it's competent. It's got some variety. It's got some long-term interest. It's got some things to discover. It's got skills to learn. A veritable sniping going on here. Oh, I ran into the thing that gives you more energy. <laughs> Those ground targets are quite hard to deal with. Yeah, there is some interesting stuff going on here, like this target prioritization, because you've got to pick which targets are the biggest threat and take them out first, and that varies according to how high the Sentinel is flying. This isn't bad at all. Certainly not the steaming pile of festering garbage I was expecting, given all those reviews. I'll tell you what I think happened. It's because of the release date of this game. We were already well into like the 16-bit home computer era. And as I've talked about a bit on the Atari ST A to Z series up until this point, for a time during that period of computing history, there was very much a sort of snobbery over simple arcade-style games. There was this assumption that, well, shouldn't we be better than this by now? You know, there was this real sort of arrogance that arcade games were beneath a lot of people. Oh, this is really hard. <laughs> There's some strategy there, though. You have to shoot at the ones that are most likely to shoot things at you. Let's have one more go at this. Because I'm finding this a whole lot more interesting and enjoyable than I think people have given it credit for in the past. Oops! Messed that up, though. As I say, I think some of the snobbery stems from the fact that... Well, or some of the negative reaction to this game, I should say, stems from snobbery. stems from the assumption that video games should be about more than just shooting stuff by this point. And I mean, this is an argument we still struggle with today. We still get people saying that video games should be moving beyond like first person shooters and that sort of thing. And in fact, what we should really have is just a rich variety of things for people to enjoy. So 
so that people who do enjoy the simple pleasure of just blasting of things, then they can enjoy that. For people who want something a bit more cerebral, they can enjoy that. And that's very much the situation we already have today. And we were starting to get that even at this point. Because you had more complex strategy games and simulations and stuff on home computers, particularly the more powerful ones like the ST and Amiga. But then you also had simple arcade action for people who enjoyed that side of things. Uh oh. This is going very poorly. That was never going to end well, was it? Right, so if I start by shooting this one. And then this one. And then. No. No, 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 no. Oh! So close. So very close. I have one more try. actually come away very pleasantly surprised with this game. was not expecting to like it at all. But as I said at the start, reviewers aren't always right. You don't always have to agree with reviewers. even supposedly popular opinions that have been held for years. Just goes to show that it's always best to make your own mind up about things. Oh, it's going terribly. Just give things a chance for yourself. See if you like them. You might be surprised. I go so far as to say, you go into it things with an open enough mind, you will be pleasantly surprised more often than not. And that's one area where I think the modern internet is kind of letting us down a bit because it's so easy for anyone to start a blog or a website or a YouTube channel or a podcast and something and say, this sucks and here's why. And get lots of views. Because for whatever reason over the years, we've been conditioned to enjoy negativity for whatever reason. I don't know why. And I hate it, because I don't, I don't enjoy negativity. Which is why I've always done things the way I do. So here on Atari A to Z, on my other YouTube videos that I've done here, over on Moe Gamer, over on Rice Digital, I always try my best not to go into anything with any sort of preconceptions of whether or not something is going to be quite unquote good. Because the idea of good is so subjective and so individual.
that there's there's just almost no value to it sometimes because like if someone says this is crap I mean what what does that even mean in practical terms what it normally means is I didn't enjoy this doesn't mean it's badly put together I mean look at this is a great example this is not badly put together at all this is moving incredibly smoothly it's got some absolutely wonderful use of color on the screen As an Atari 2600 light gun game, it has that sort of uniqueness to offer. It's got some cool and interesting mechanics with the way the smart bomb charges up. It's got different enemy patterns, different enemy formations, different ways that you have to deal with them. There is absolutely no way you can call this a bad game. It can be a game that you don't enjoy, sure. It can be a game that you don't have fun with, sure. But compare this to games on the 2600 which actually were bad. And, well... I think the disparity speaks for itself, really. And also the fact that I've genuinely enjoyed sitting here for over 20 minutes at this point playing this game. a lot longer than I thought I would be spending time with this game. And I'm I'm having a genuinely enjoyable time. So it is, it is as both my friend Chris and I say on a fairly regular basis on the Moe Gamer podcast. Without fail, it is always, always worth considering something on its own terms and its own merits. Rather than just jumping in there and go, oh, well, I heard, I heard that so-and-so said this was rubbish, so I'm not even going to try it myself. There we go, done it. All right, on to level two, Seraptus. The only slight shame with this game is the fact that music doesn't change. But an Atari 2600 game having music at all in the first place is unusual enough. And this was an era where a lot of developers placed more importance on graphics than sound. And they've absolutely nailed it with the graphics in this. Because look at those lovely coloured enemies with the shading on them. And the smooth movement and the fact that they're unique enemies for each level.
Yeah, they done you dirty, Sentinel. They done you dirty. This would be fun with the light gun as well. As it stands. Playing this with the analog stick. My my hand is just starting to cramp up a little bit at this point. But if you've got a good feel for sort of using the analog stick on the Switch Pro Controller in particular very precisely, which is what I'm playing with this with here. You can be surprisingly accurate. And also, the upside of it being a 2600 game is because the the resolution on the screen is so limited, you, you don't have to be that accurate. <laughs> I mean, you can see any time I fire a shot, the size of the block that appears to register where your hit is. Is pretty large, so you don't have to be super accurate at all. So all my favourite light gun games from over the years have been a little bit forgiving in that regard. Now, in the case of this game, it's actually almost a technical limitation working in your favour. The boss. Oh, it's it. I was hoping for a completely different boss. It is at least a different design, though, and it's animating differently. You know what? I like that. That's a decent game. That's a decent game that has had a grave injustice perpetrated on it over the years, and I will, I will stand by that opinion. But yeah, that was a very pleasant surprise indeed. Very pleasant surprise indeed. It's always nice to discover these things, and indeed I've had quite a lot of nice surprises like this over the course of Atari Flashback Classics as a whole. When I think back over some of the sports games, for example, are ones that I keep bringing up. Because so many of those have been really pleasantly surprising. They've, they've turned out to be fun video games rather than trying to get too up their own ass over being realistic sports simulations. In fact, the ones that have fallen down the most for me are the ones that are trying to be too realistic. Things like real sports football. But yeah, that was that was good. I enjoyed that. So yeah, if you've never played Sentinel before, give it a chance. If you have a, a 2600 or 7800 and have a light gun to use with it, the XE light gun, the one that came with the XE game system, will work with this. Um, then yeah, I recommend giving it a go. Don't forget, if you're not familiar... Um, light guns will not work on modern televisions. They will only work on old CRT TVs because of the way that they, um, the way that they sense the light and so on. Um, but yeah, like a, a reasonable substitute is uh, is this one here. As long as you can handle the analog controls, which I appreciate not everyone um, likes, but you do have the option of playing in um, what they call relative mode. Which means that you, rather than pushing pushing the stick to directly move the thing on the screen, relative means you push left and it moves to the left a bit, rather than all the way across the screen. So you can do it that way. It's a shame there's no gyro controls, because that would have really, really made that game um, like a really good adaptation in this collection. But as it stands, perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. A lot better than I was led to believe. Anyway, let's leave that there for today. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.